Good morning. Good morning. From St. Stephen's here in Harrington, Delaware, on the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. Holy Eucharist Rite 2 may be found inside the bulletin that you may download it or on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading today comes from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of the other gods or presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 111. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. The congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his, his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is, he is ever, ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving, in giving them, them the land of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All, and all his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because, because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome, awesome is his name. name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those, Those who act accordingly have, have good understanding. understanding. His, his praise endures forever. forever. 
The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and whom, through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now. They still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat it, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and their wound, and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples went into Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as a scribe. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept ask, on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. I read today's gospel, we, we did, we met as, as resource priests the other day, and this is one that Martha Kirk Pratchett brought out for us to do a Bible study on. And I looked at it, I said, Jesus goes to Capernaum, he enters the synagogue, and he begins to teach. I said, he's a supply priest. That's what we got here, we got Jesus the supply priest, or the supply rabbi. He goes to a synagogue, and he just teaches. Then he sits down. I wish I could do that. Just, you know, do this and just go sit down. It's the story after that we get caught up in. The unclean spirit. As, as I've gone from church to church, now that I've been here for a while, you give to know people a little bit better. Getting to know folks around here a little bit better. And it's not like we have 
unclean spirit as, as such like this, is it? Somebody who will just say, I know who you are, Bruce Lomas. No, you don't. <laughs> no, no, no. Because no, I'm not, I am not the Holy One. We praise the Holy One, pray to the Holy One from this place. I'm more like the scribes. You know, like you did say, I don't, my authority only rests so far. In fact, many of us, in our own way of living, we, we, we project authority onto others. They may not deserve our, that projection, but we give them authority. We give it to doctors. A sort of an authority. They, they, they supposedly know a lot about medicine. And when we're sick, and when we're dis in distress, and we go to a doctor, we allow them to do what we think is right. Some of you may remember that movie. I think it was uh, one of the ball, Alex Baldwin, Alec Baldwin, who played a doctor. And he was being sued in court. And he tells the people, I am God. That's the authority that's taken a bad turn. But we do that. We give authority to others. We give authority to people with a collar in the church. And if they wear a purple shirt, we give them even more authority. And if they got most reverend in front of the name, they give them even more authority. And we say they're the Pope, well, then they got the most authority on earth. But we give it to them. We give it to them. And in many ways, the church is a body. And not one part of that body is greater than any other part of the body. Paul says that in his letters. You cannot say to the, the hand can't say to the foot, I don't need you, go away. The ear can't say to the eyes, I don't need you, go away. In fact, we need each and every one of us as we move forward through this time and as we try to make sense of the world in which we live in. Paul's letter today speaks about those who are worried about eating food that's been sacrificed to idols. But that's not the point, Paul would say. That's not what's important. What's important is what is about us. If you think eating food from, a, from something sacrificed to idols is going to harm you, just don't do it. Don't go to McDonald's. Just don't do it. But it's not the thing which is going to do you damage. At least not to your soul. It's what we believe in and what we carry in our hearts each and every day. And the demon, if you notice, is the only one who notices, Je who calls out Jesus for who Jesus really is. It's not the people in the synagogue. They're just amazed. They're sitting there going, wow, this guy's really smart. He's got, he's clever. He's got authority. He's, whoo -hoo. More so than our normal rabbi. But it's the demon, the guy who's possessed, who notices who Jesus is who he is. You are the Holy One of God. And then Jesus calls it out. Calls out the demon. Calls out what is harming this man, this person. It's an exorcism of sorts. Something we can't do in the Episcopal Church. Well, we can do it. But in the book of occasional services, in which there's an, it says exorcism, it says call the bishop. Isn't that great? Hello. Bishop Brown, hello. I got an exorcism I got to do here. We are all confronted by demons. We are all confronted by idols. We have our own demons and our own idols. It's when those demons and those idols begin to take, take control of our lives and 
drive us rather than what God is asking of us. Epiphany is a time when the light should come on and we, should, we are called to recognize Jesus for who Jesus truly is, the Holy One of God. One who brings us light and life in this world. We have so many distractions. We got too many 24 hour, 24 7 news stations going on. Shut them off. We got too many social media networks. Fast from them. We got too many people with too many opinions claiming to be authorities when in fact they're just spouting out their own opinion. And we are called to listen for God in the midst of all of this racket and noise that surrounds us. And to recognize the one who has true authority in our lives. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he is the one whom we will follow. In a few weeks it will be Ash Wednesday. A few weeks, a couple of weeks, not a week from Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. oh, it will be Ash Wednesday. We'll be in the Lenten season. And I know some people don't like Lent. They go, oh my God, Lent. Pull out my hair shirt again and start beating on myself. It's not Lent. It's, Lent is a journey. It's all of our journey. Our journey with Jesus Christ to Jerusalem. To face this world knowing that there are forces out there that seek to diminish what we are about. So we give our lives over to Christ. As hard as that is, nobody says it's going to be perfect. Nobody says you're going to do it. That's why each day is another day. Each day is another day for us to reclaim God in our lives and to show it to all whom we come in contact with. It's that simple and yet that hard. As I said, there's plenty of demons and plenty of idols. And in that mess is also the word of God showing us the way forward. Stop, stand together and say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. And according to the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
prayers of the people are form ships. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors. And for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. We pray for those in the building. Christopher Dawson, Justin Berry, Jamie Grimes, Justin R. Hudson, Russell Nye, Amber Mabry, Jared Farmer, and Bruce Carroll. All who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, we pray for the following. Those who are sick or with other issues. John McKay, Bill Shaw, Shirley Bowden, Emma Fisher, Diana Matlock, Ava Sari, Landerlin, Joe Slavowski, Gabby Bates, Bernie Falker, Kathy Russ, Kelsey Malloy, Regina Miller, Becky Miles, Julia Wise, Paula Swift, Bruce Clinton, and Alfred Clinton. <clears throat> For long-term and restored health, Dale Matlock and Barbara Mogul. For good health in older years, Gretchen Fogus, Molly Reynolds, Mary Mills, and Joan Knott. For those who are sick, sick, the sick, the friendless, friendless and the needy. needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all, for all who claim the gospel and, and all who seek the truth. truth. For the most reverend Michael B. Curry, our presiding bishop. For Ke <coughs> Reverend Kevin S. Brown, our diocesan bishop. For Bruce Lomas, our priest. Alex Emmert, senior warden. Vestry Group. Patricia, Patricia, Viva, Connie, Rock, and the Diocesan Disciple of Prayer, St. Anne's Church, Middletown, the Reverend Russ Bowman, Rector, the Reverend Celeste O. Cox, Priest in Residence, and the Reverend Carl N. Clunts, Jr., Rector Emeritus, and for all bishops and other ministers. All who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this life. And we ask your thanksgivings. The birthday of Preston Bowden and Rose Green, the baptism of Chase Gleason. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise and your name forever and ever. ever. We pray for the, all those who have died, that they may have a place in their eternal kingdom. Let your loving kindness be upon them, we put their trust in you. We pray also for the forgiveness of our sins. All together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all the sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory and grace to your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voice with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love you may know to us in creation, and the cause of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets and above all the words made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given to you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now after supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, gracious God, and send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacraments of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time for all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. Stephen and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ is part, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have done us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Set us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinless of heart through Christ our Lord. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds.